Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about minimizing the distance from a point to a curve. This is a pretty common um, minimization problem in calculus. So let's take a look at what the problem would say, and then we will solve it. So we are given the curve y squared equals 150 minus 10x, where x is between 0 and 15. We want to find the coordinates of the point on the curve in quadrant 1 that is nearest to the origin. So this one's a little weird because we're given y squared equals 150 minus 10x. You wouldn't really lose anything, I don't think, if you um, just took the square root and said y is equal to the square root of 150 minus 10x. I'm just going to draw sort of a generic sideways parabola and go from there. I mean, it's not super generic, but here we go. So here are my axes. I know that if y is equal to 0, then x will be 15. Um, and then uh, I know that this thing opens to the left. But let me tell you, even if you got that picture wrong, it wouldn't really change the process that we're going to go through. And so you don't have to worry so much about getting a perfect graph. Let's um, put a point on the curve, which I think is actually kind of the key to solving this. So there's my point. That point in general is the point x comma y. That's going to be really important. And we're trying to find the distance from this point to the origin. We want the closest point on the curve to the origin. So what I'm going to do is I'm thinking distance. Um, so distance formula, right? So my two ordered pairs are x, y, and 0, 0. So I'm going to write a distance equation. So it should be the square root of, and then it'll be uh, x minus 0 squared um, plus y minus 0 squared. So I'm writing in the zeros. You know, you might not do that. I'm going to simplify this a tiny little bit because why would I have written those zeros? So square root of x squared plus y squared. Now, this is a really common thing that you run into in optimization problems. Uh, we're trying to find a minimum, so we're going to take a derivative, set it equal to 0, and blah, blah, blah. There are too many variables here, right? We have x's and y's, and we have d, which is the name of the function. I'm going to replace one of the variables. Usually, at this step, you'll replace y. So I know that y squared uh, was actually given. It's 150 minus 10x. So that's a key step. There's going to be probably too many variables. You have to get rid of one of them. Usually you get rid of y by just going back to what is the equation of the curve. All right, so I'm going to replace y squared with 150 minus 10x. So I get d is square root of x squared plus the quantity 150 minus 10x. All right, so I want to minimize this. And what you could do is you could take the derivative, set it equal to 0, and solve. That's a very common thing to do, and that will definitely work for you. But what I want to do in this problem is something a little bit different. I'm actually going to square d, and I'm going to create a new function that I'm going to call d sub 2, because I don't want the exponent to like confuse things. So I'm going to create d sub 2, which is the square of d. The reason I'm doing that is that the derivative of this is easier to take. I also kind of rearranged the terms, hopefully you noticed. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to find the derivative of this. The reason this works is that the x value that minimizes the square of the distance, which is d sub 2, also minimizes the distance. The thing you have to watch out for is we're using d sub 2, the square of the distance, to find that x-coordinate. So if I need the actual distance, I have to go back to the original function d. That's the only caveat to that. Otherwise, it's a little bit easier to work with the square of the distance. So I'm going to find a derivative. I'm going to set it equal to 0 and go from there. So this is just power rule. So d sub 2 prime is 2x minus 10. I'm going to set that equal to 0 and get that x is 5. Now I need to test this thing because I need to see if this is a minimum. This could potentially be a maximum. Um, if I mean, I don't think it will be. But it could be a maximum. If it was a maximum, then I would have to check the endpoints. The endpoints, because I have to be in quadrant 1, would be 0 and 15. I would just take those, plug it into the distance, and see what I get. Um, so I'm going to do a sign chart where I'm going to put 5. And then to the left of zero, uh, to the left of 5, rather, uh, something like 0, right? 0 is to the left of 5. I would get, I'm plugging into d2 prime. I get 0 minus 10, so negatives. And then to the right, like, you could, well, I mean, we have to stop at 15, uh, but if we plug in, like, I don't know, 10, uh, we would get 20 minus 10, which is definitely positive. All right, so the derivative went from negative to positive, which means we have a relative minimum. I'm going to write up a justification. So I'm not going to make you watch that whole thing. I'm just going to jump through it. 
D2 has a relative minimum at x equals 5 because D2 prime changes negative to positive there. I'm also going to make sure that I'm saying this is the absolute minimum. So there is only one critical point. There's a relative minimum at that critical point. It must be the absolute minimum. So I'm going to write that. So since there is, since this is the only critical point, D2 has absolute minimum at x equals 5. So you really want to work on your justifications, especially if you're an AP calculus. Um, Free response questions, all about justifying things. So we have justified it, but we didn't actually answer the question, right? Because the question was to find, we know that D has a minimum when X is five, but that wasn't the question. It was, what is the point on the curve that is nearest to the origin? So I have to actually find Y. So I'm just gonna go back up to that Y squared thing. Y squared is 150 minus 10 X. We now know that X is five. Um, you could probably blow through this on your own. Um, so that's y squared is 100, and since we're in the first quadrant, that means that y is going to be positive 10. Um, so there is a point in the fourth quadrant, I guess, at 5, negative 10 that is equally close, but that's not in the first quadrant. So the ordered pair we were looking for here is the point 5, comma 10. All right, on the next kind of page, I'm just going to summarize how I solve these problems. So this is like the strategy that I use. So the first thing is I'm going to sketch a curve. It doesn't need to look good or accurate even. You just need to get an idea of what's going on. I'm gonna put a point on the curve. So the point I'm gonna put on is x comma y because every point on a curve can be thought of as x, y. Then I'm gonna write the distance formula in terms of the point that uh, the point x, y, and then if it's the origin, I'll use zero, zero. If it has to be the closest point to five, three, I'll use the point x, y, and five, three. Just write your distance formula. That'll probably have too many variables in it. So we want to sub for a variable. The one you usually sub for is y equals f of x. And then you'll have something entirely in terms of x. The next thing we want to do is take the derivative of the distance or of the distance squared, which is usually easier. Uh, from there, we are going to confirm that it's a minimum because it might not be. It could actually be a maximum. Um, if it is a maximum, just test the endpoints and one of those has to give you the minimum. But usually you'll actually get a minimum on these problems. And then finally, you want to answer the question. So that's a process that we go through and an example. I hope you found this helpful and uh, good luck.